Hello NDT people, uh, my name is Kamara Dell. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up uh, thickness in a few different ways. I'm going to be using an Epic Light by Panometrics. I don't even think these things are made anymore. I'm pretty sure Olympus bought Panometrics a long time ago. Some of the buttons on here have different names. Every unit is a little bit different depending on who makes them. Um, I'm going to do my best to explain what is uh, synonymous uh, along different units. The, the rules here are going to be able to be used for any unit to set up thickness, which is one of the first things you're going to want to be able to do when you start doing UT, uh, which of course is ultrasonic testing. What I've got here is a, uh, this is an Olympus 5 meg probe. It's a V201 probe. It's a quarter inch and we've got a delay tip. Uh, normally you're only going to use delay tips when you are doing very thin materials. So a lot of aerospace stuff uh, ends up using delay tips. Sometimes with the thicker stuff, you'll just use a straight beam with a wear cap. But I've been working in aerospace for a while and this is pretty much one of the preferred ways of doing simple thicknesses, even defect evaluation in very thin materials. Uh, one thing about a delay tip is obviously, as the name implies, you will have to delay your initial pulse uh, back to where the end of the tip is. This particular tip, that tends to come at about half inch. So it's difficult to size anything uh, around there. All right, so let's get into so it. So right away, you'll notice this is a much older unit. So there are a lot of buttons on here. Basically, anytime you're going to be setting up thickness, the most important things that you're going to be dealing with are the velocity and the delay. On here, they call it zero offset. Um, sometimes you'll also see probe delay. I think that is probably the most specific description of what, it, what it's actually doing. Sometimes also wedge delay. And so we have not sure if the video is going to pick that up, but it's set to about 10.27 microseconds right now. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's the right one, but that's about, it's going to get us into the general area so that we can start reining it in. So I've got step wedges right here. Uh, ranging in thickness. Autofocus is not doing me any favors right now. There we go. From 40 thousandths up to 500 thousandths. We're going to see how many of these we can get accurately displayed in one setup. Sometimes when you're going over a large range of thicknesses, you actually want to, uh, you're going to need to fine tune it for a few if you want down to the third decimal place accuracy. All right, so let's see where we are right now. I was messing around with this unit a little bit a while ago. So, yep. Yeah, we need to do some serious adjustment. Um, first thing I'm gonna show you is how to set it up in just simple straight sound path setup. So I'm on the three right now and we are getting out to point three. So why, why am I calling this a simple sound path setup? Because basically we're coming from our initial pulse to the, uh, the back wall. And how do we know that that's the back wall? Well, we can dampen the back of the plate and where my finger touches, you can see the signal just drop just a little bit there. It's reducing by about half because some of the sound is going into my finger. Also because the probe is rocking a little bit, but yeah. Anyway, so we know that we're on the back there. This is supposed to be 0.3 thick. We're getting up here in the top right corner. We're getting 0.316. So we need to 
probably adjust both the velocity. Probably need to actually just move the zero. I'm pretty sure that the velocity for this steel is not going to be 2,000 inches per microsecond. It's going to be more uh, like 2,300. So I'll just keep bringing the, the actual zero down. All right, now I'm going to increase the velocity until we get probably close to about 2300. All right, so now we're on the 0.4 step and it's right on 0 0.4. 0 0.3 step, it's about three thou off. So I'm going to go back down to the zero. I'm going to bump that till that's about right. Still getting a lot of uh, wiggle. Bump that. Okay, so now we got 399 to 299. Bump that a little bit more. A little bit more water. Okay, go back. One more. 0.3. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, let's see. Okay, so why is it still saying 0.4? I'm on the, I'm on the 0 0.2. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, looks good. 0.4, looks great. 0 0.2, well it still says 0.4. Well, if you can see my screen, I'm not sure how well you can see it. When I'm on the 0.2, it's actually gating both of these peaks right here. So that is the first back wall reflection, and that's the second back wall reflection of the 0.2 thickness. If I wanna make that better, I can just shrink the gate. I'm, I'm moving the start right now. Uh, let's see, press gate again. I can make the gate less wide. All right. So now it says 0.176. Why? Well, that brings me to the next thing that I want to talk about. Right now, we have it, if you can see right here, we have it in half wave positive. This is a common mistake you can make from times. It's like, okay, well, this looks right. But what's going on here is for whatever reason, we have some cycle reversal going on. So we're looking at the positive aspect of the wave and we have competing peaks here. I probably want that second peak. So this may just not be the best, the best um, rectification to do these thicknesses. So if I want to adjust that because I'm having this problem, I know that it's not point, uh, I know that it's not 0.176, I know that it's 200. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the rectification. So for this particular unit, pulser, there you go. So we'll go to the pulser. We'll go back right here. You can see it's already starting to do a little bit better. I can kind of move it with my finger and that second peak comes up and it is right on. But we want to change the pulser from half wave negative. We can do full wave, we can do RF, or we can do half wave positive. I'm gonna bring down the gain because it seems like the positive aspect of this particular wave for this material is a much stronger part of the wave. Generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to use the rectification that gives you the highest peak. It's not always the rule, but you know, if you're just setting up thickness, one single peak is always gonna be better. Okay, so now we're a little bit off. All right, so why are we a little bit off? Well, because we've changed which part of the wave is under our gate. All right, so I'm gonna come back here and I'm probably just gonna to need to adjust my zero because the material velocity hasn't changed at all. So I adjusted my zero. Let me change the screens a little bit, boom. So I've adjusted my zero. Now it's at 10.42 microseconds. I'm on the 0.3 block. You can see that we have a perfect 0.3 coming in right there. <laughs> Still having this uh, 0.4 on the 0.2. Uh, we got 0.402 on the uh, 400. I'll go back down to the 0.2. I'll move my gate width. 
and I'll move the start. Boom, we're on point two. Move it in again, let's see if we got, yep, we got point one. It's 0 0.097 plus or minus 3,000. And then the point five. Well, the point five is not even in the gate. Let's go all the way out here. Bam. So we're off by about two thou there. You're always gonna wanna set up your thicknesses over the range that you're gonna be expecting. So if we wanna put it in RF, same thing, we go back here, we go to Pulsar. We can change around here and we go into RF mode. Sometimes people prefer RF. Uh, it's kind of a matter of, well, I mean, read your spec, whatever procedure you're working to, whatever technique you're working to, you're gonna wanna do that, whatever it says. All right, so now we can show you how to do it setting up two gates. Some of the newer equipment will allow you to read from gate to gate, and it will even attach the second gate to the first gate. And that's gonna give you the highest accuracy thickness reading. Okay, so for some reason, this unit won't allow us to be in radio frequency and echo to echo reading at the same time. Um, sometimes for, well, for various reasons, but in particular thinner materials, it is very difficult to gate the, um, the first peak because you're gonna be too close to your initial pulse. So what you wanna use is the second or third, sometimes they call it the multiple back wall technique. Uh, in this case, it would be echo to echo peaking. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I've got the unit set up in half wave. We've already calibrated our thickness. Now we want to read from gate one to gate two. Of course, this is always gonna require two gates. Um, it's taking the distance in the peak from gate one and subtracting that from the distance in the peak in gate two, and that's how it's creating your reading. Right now I'm holding in my hand the same cow block that we set up thickness, and it's probably a bit difficult to make out. But now, as it comes to point one, I've got my gate two, if you can see that down here, it is set to point zero nine eight, which means that when I come to point four, it won't work. The start of gate two is going to be the only limiting factor with the minimum thickness that I can actually register when I'm reading echo to echo. Why? Well, because I'm telling gate two not to come any closer to gate one than 0 0.098 right now. If you can see this shift here, we'll just shorten gate one to make it a little bit more clear what's actually going on here and why this is a benefit. So here's gate one, nice and short. Let's see if we can see that. Oh yeah, that looks great. Bam. So, you see gate two just jumping all around? See how my thickness keeps adjusting? Gate one staying planted, gate two reading to the echo. So, like I said, if you look down here where we see gate two, it's at the point zero nine eight. That allows me to measure any thicknesses up to 98 thousandths. So I'll come here and I'll hit gate two just to kind of show what I'm talking about. If I make it, that's at 0.126 now. I can't read this uh, 0.1 inch step anymore because it's, it's completely bypassing this uh, echo that's coming from that one and jumping over to this next echo. Bring it back in, 0.9. Boom, now we're back right on, boom. And you see my gate just jumping around, reading peak to peak. It's not able to read the point four because we don't have enough range. So let's open up the range a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. 
we can extend the width of gate one or we can ex extend the start of gate one. I'm gonna choose to extend the width of gate one. Bam, you see that? It instantly jumped over and got that second reflection at point eight. And now it is reading from point four on the time base to point eight on the time base. Um, it's kind of shifted a little bit because we've had to do some uh, changes in our zero to compensate for this delay tip, right? But yeah, now we can check over a large distance of thicknesses. We'd have to dial it in again. You know, you always want to center your calibration around the expected thickness. It's going to be very difficult to calibrate it over a very large thickness range and get third decimal place accuracy. All right, that's a few ways to set up thickness using any instrument. Uh, you want to be careful uh, when you're when you're seeing different uh, different terminology used. Sometimes it's called probe delay, sometimes it's called wedge delay, sometimes it's called offset, uh, different wave modes. This particular unit won't allow us to do the echo to echo in RF, but we can do it easily in full wave, half wave, positive or negative. Um, that selection is going to depend on what you're doing and which peaks look best. Uh, in particular, if you're inspecting material that has a coated backside, or there's uh, you know, dissimilar metals, any sort of bonding going on, you'll have to make sure that you're reading the same peak when you go echo to echo because of cycle, cycle reversal, uh, which is something that we can discuss in another video, but it's something to be very careful for because you can have a very significant, as many as 10 thousandths uh, uh, inaccuracy in your readings if you're not being aware. I mean, this machine will lie to you. It does a lot of brilliant things but it is just a simple machine. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.